<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program Teacher Certification Course. Say that is 10 times as quick as you can. Woo. You can be seated. I'm running a little bit late. <laughs> um, for all of our friends that are joining us over the Internet, you can go to uh, the top of the page there on Facebook. If you're on the Facebook page, you can, uh, there's a, at the top of the page, there's a download the manual section. We're on the third manual, uh, the uh, Peaceful Solution Character Education Program Self-Control Unit. We'll be covering Chapter 7 tonight, Self-Control in the Environment. And uh, we'll be picking up on page 209 uh, of the manual. But before we do that, of course, we're going to rehearse a little bit about what we've been learning here. And I, and I really kind of want to go back uh, to the beginning of the chapter to remind us of something here, and I'll give you a page number. Let's turn over to page 187. Self, chapter 7 begins on 187. Um, there's something that I want to get in your mind before tonight's lesson, and that is in the second paragraph. It says, in this final chapter, we will expand the concept of self-control to include the environment. We will explore ways in which our choices pollute and contaminate our air, water, and food supply. And now, I want you to underline this portion here because it, it would tend to go right over your head just reading it quickly and, you know, but so you need to read it slow, you need to underline it, and you really need to emphasize this with students that you're teaching. It says the word environment encompasses, that means it includes, all living things as well as the atmosphere, soil, and all bodies of water. Remember the word environment, it encompasses all living things. What are living things? Well, are you a living thing? <laughs> yes, we, we're alive. So it, it, the environment includes us. It includes the things you can see and the things you can't see, like the microorganisms, which how I showed last class, um, you know, we're, we're doing our, we're, we're, you know, there's a lot of well-intentioned people out there that are trying to clean up the environment, but there's people coming right behind them with some other practices that are pretty much making it futile. Remember the, we talked about last class how they were, uh, putting uh, what they called it, bio, what do they call that stuff, bio, just checking, your bio solids, which is really just human waste, right, into the uh, farmland, into the, you know, into the soil for planting crops, into the schoolyards, into the lawns and people's lawns and in their homes, and this stuff is getting everywhere. I don't think it's just sitting there in the field, you know, or sitting there at the schoolyard, people are stepping in it. They're touching it, as you saw those two people handling it without any, even any gloves on. Um, you know, these choices that we're making, you know, they're being made to make money, but they're bad choices. They're choices that are causing harm to ourselves, others, and the environment. So those are immoral choices. Remember what a moral choice is. A moral choice is something that doesn't bring harm to you, you yourself, or the environment. And, you know, even though they might not see... Right now, they might not see some of the consequences of what their choices are bringing. Um, we're seeing them. If you're taught, if you're just taught to discern, you know, using the peaceful solution program, you can actually see a lot of these consequences right now. But others might. It might take more education to get them to see. But eventually, they will see the full brunt of these choices that they're making. Uh, in, 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 in these choices they're making with the environment. Okay, so I hope you underline that the word environment encompasses all living things as well as the atmosphere, atmosphere soil, and all bodies of water. Now I'm going to go back, I'm going to take a little trip back in the character unit real quick before we proceed tonight. And on page 8 of the character unit, when it talks about morals, okay, it says that you know, morality is divided into three categories, and one of those categories is behavior and attitude toward the environment, okay? And I just told you the environment encompasses all living things, including human beings, including the microorganisms that you can't see. 
And on page 9, in the middle of the page, it says moral principles can also be applied to the environment and how we care for it. And we need air, water, plants, and animals to survive. You know, we also need each other, you know. It's not like we can just make it alone, you know. Remember about how we are all interconnected, how we are all uh, interdependent on each other, okay? And it says... And all of these things make up our environment, air, water, plants, animals, etc. And, you know, it's not like you can leave this earth. You know, you have to take these things with you. If you, if you were to go into space, you would have to take air, uh, food, water, etc. into space with you. You know, uh, so if you ruin this planet, if we ruin the planet, you know, this is all we got. We're not going to be able to take it back to Target or Walmart and trade it in for something new. You know, okay, so... It says, when everyone does their part to care for our environment by not polluting the earth or using harsh man-made chemicals that contaminate our atmosphere and water, we're demonstrating regard for all life. And it also talks about, and I won't get into that yet, but I will. We can also display a moral attitude toward animals by treating them kindly and not condoning any form of animal cruelty. Animal cruelty disregards the fact that every animal has a purpose that benefits mankind, the earth, and the food supply. And we're going to be getting into a little bit of that tonight. You know, we've been covering, you know, in the first, in chapter 7, you know, we've been talking about what pollution is, okay? And as a matter of fact, if you can put up that first slide, I want to get this in your mind because we just read the word environment, right? What environment encompasses? Now, this word pollution... Let's get this in our mind. Pollution means the presence, the presence in or introduction into the environment of a substance or thing that has harmful, poisonous effects. I'm going to read that one more time. Pollution is the presence in or introduction into the environment of a substance or thing that has harmful or poisonous effects and if you can see if you're looking on the screen there's a few uh, uh, synonyms for the word pollution synonyms are words that are similar um, one of them is contamination contaminating adulteration soiling dirtying dirtiness foulness befouling infecting infection uh, filthiness but I'm pointing at one with an arrow it's the word adulterating adulterating okay adulterating well what does that word mean let's go to oh, hold on might have something out of order here it looks like I have one could you go go after the next slide there's another slide and then go to the third slide that's the one I'm, wa I'm watch watching okay that word adulterate adulterate means uh, to make inferior in other words, to bring something down, make it lower. Impure, not genuine. In other words, not the same as it was. By adding a harmful, less valuable, or prohibited substance to it. So it means mixing. Mixing something in with something else. Making it impure or synthetic. Okay? Uh, degrading it. Polluting it. Uh, these are some of the synonyms you see around that word adulterate there, if you can read them. Uh, it means to weaken something, to weaken, to bring it down, to defile it, is what another one of the synonyms for adulterate is. Okay, so by to make inferior, impure, and not genuine, by adding a, harm, a harmful, less valuable, or a prohibited substance to something. And remember, in it, all living things, you can add something into all living things that can bring it down including animals, humans, etc. So we got to be careful what we're putting into ourselves and uh, others and uh, uh, the you know in our environment. Okay, so with that, what I want to do now is go back to uh, LP. Um, let's see. We're going to be covering 20 We're going to be covering 209. So we want to read step 7 tonight. It says, tell students that they will now, it's so LP7D, by the way, step seven. Tell students that they will now explore how our choices affect the food supply. 
Have you ever heard of mad cow disease? You need to ask your students that question. Instruct the students to read the section cannibalistic cows found on page 209. Ask students if they've heard of genetically modified foods. Okay, and this is part of the step we won't get to tonight, but these are just some of the things we're going to be learning in this step. And also on page 211 through 13, have students read under the section entitled The Saga Continues and complete the quiz on page 214 and discuss the answers. Emphasize to students that because many food contaminants slowly affect the body, notice, slowly affect the body. It's not something overnight. Although some things can kill you pretty quickly, like E. coli and other things can, can get you right away, but some things sit in your body and hibernate for years and years, as we're going to learn tonight, regarding a mad cow disease. So they can slowly affect the body. Uh, because many food contaminants slowly affect the body, serious consequences manifest themselves years later. So we must consider how our choices affect the food supply. All right, so let's go over to page 209 because we're going we're gonna to leave the subject of water. And, you know, we probably could have spent another, you know, three months on that, <laughs> at least, about what's going on with our water supply. But we're going to move on now to the food supply. And it's take a bite out of this. Are you sure you want to? Now, remember, I told you the next few lessons that you're going to hear, don't be eaten before you hear these lessons. And I'm also going to warn you that there's some very extremely disturbing content in tonight's video. I'll warn you about, I just want to warn you ahead of time. Okay, but you really need to know what's taking place. Your students need to know what's taking place. They can handle it. They can handle it. You know, they can sit there, and before they came to the peaceful solution, they could sit there and watch people getting their limbs blown off in movies, and, you know, they were playing video games where, you know, where they were, you know, mortally wounding people and things. So they can take it. They can take it. They can take reality. They can take what they see. And you don't want to sugarcoat this. There's no sugarcoating in the peaceful solution. You've got to educate people and show them what's really taking place so they can understand. You can't just tell them, you have to show them. So, food, another essential requirement for life can also become polluted because people within our society have not stopped to consider that food must be free of contaminants and disease in order to benefit the human body. That's, that's saying a lot right there, that, you know, people don't consider you know, when they think of pollution, what do you think of? You know, you think of some big, let's go to that next slide. Or that one that I skipped, slide number two. Let's go to that one. When we think of pollution, we tend to think of what you see there, you know, the, the you know, all the, uh, the factories putting out smoke and, you know, oil cans laying around, you know, oil barrels laying around, contaminating the earth, et cetera and taking a big whiff of it, you know, and getting it up our lungs. And that does hurt. That does hurt us. And it does hurt the environment to do things like that. But, you know, Chris and Chris and David also showed you what the real cause of global warming is, which is these STDs that are being, uh, that are in our water, in our soil. They're going up into the atmosphere when condensation takes place. They're harming the bacteria that's called, you know, the firmament in the air. It's throwing off the weather. The earth can't, you know, the, the, the protective layer that they call the ozone, which we call the firmament, is being harmed. It's being damaged. You know, the, the bacteria is being uh, invaded. I'll just put it that way. It's being invaded, uh, mutated, okay, with these viruses. These viruses are harming the bacteria, so the bacteria can no longer work correctly to, 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 to help us. And we're doing this to ourselves by human activity. Remember, these STDs don't come from just, you know, you don't just get an STD. It comes from breaking, remember, all disease comes from breaking the peaceful solution rules, right? STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, we've talked a lot about them. Okay, so when don't just think when you think of pollution, don't just think of, you know, what when we think of pollution, do we do we normally think of our own bodies being polluted? 
our minds being polluted? We don't normally think about that when we use the word pollution and environment. Remember, environment encompasses all living things. You're a living thing. Okay? So keep that in your mind as we proceed. There's an entire range of ways that foods can be polluted, from pesticides to genetic altering, which the next teacher will probably get into, to feeding herbivores meat. An herbivore is an animal that eats herbs, that eats grass. It's not supposed to eat anything but that. Everything from our vegetables to our steaks can be affected if we neglect to care for our food. Okay, so food is essential. Remember, food is something we need to have. You know, would you take a, 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 a vial of arsenic and pour it on your steak? <laughs> Purposely? No, because you wouldn't want to poison yourself, right? You wouldn't want to ruin the steak. You want to eat the steak, right? But you can actually poison it to where it's not edible for yourself and other people. So we now there's many ways this is being done, but unless we get educated to see what's really taking place, we're never going to even consider what's taking place with the food chain with these animals that are remember we only see the cows when we're driving down the you know one of these farm roads in Texas, you know, you see a lot of cows grazing out in the field. That's a small amount of cows compared to the 10,000 cows that are all in one feed lot with no grass, nothing but manure for miles and miles. And boy, you can smell it too. If you're driving by a feed lot, whether it's a cow lot or a pig lot or whatever it might be, chickens, you know, they're all laying in their filth all day and they're, you know, I won't get into that tonight. The future teachers will probably talk about it, but there's some really, really horrible form farming practices going on in the world, okay, that you need to know about, that you need to be aware of, that we need to be aware of. So let's talk first about cannibalistic cows, okay? And remember, these cows, they can't, they can't make their choice. <laughs> They'll eat only herbs, okay? They are, they're made to eat the herbs, but they can be fooled into eating things by human beings, Okay? So they're not being cannibals on their own. You can bring a cow a piece of meat, and it won't even touch it. But you can trick it into eating other animals, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So it says, oh, but before I get to that, let me see if I had, no, I don't. Okay, so cows eat grass, right? Right? Hmm, yeah. Well, Hey, can you skip ahead? I, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you skip a few slides ahead where it says mad cow disease? We'll come back to those other ones after I show this first video here. There you go. This is page 209, by the way. It says, you know, cows eat grass, right? Well, not always. Okay, we're going to be talking about that. And I won't even get into how the cows are eating uh, corn, which they weren't even made to eat, and what that's causing. We're just going to talk tonight about rendering and how animals, cows in particular, are being fed certain proteins from other dead animals that they should not be eating, and they're being tricked into eating. They're becoming carnivores instead of herbivores, and it's causing damage to the cow and in turn causing damage to the people that ingest the parts of this cow. So... Cows by nature are vegetarians, but modern agricultural techniques decided it was more profitable. There's that word again, underline that word. <laughs> more, or those two words, more profitable, 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 money, money making, right? Modern agricultural techniques decided it was more profitable to feed meat to cows than to keep feeding them grass. Cows that died of cancer and other diseases were sent to rendering plants and fed back to healthy cows. That, that sounds pretty disgusting, doesn't it? Well, it, you, don't, you ain't seen the half of it. Rendering is a process of turning one substance into another by melting it down. In this case, dead, diseased cows were boiled down, then ground up and added to cattle feed. Now that sounds a little bit doesn't that sound a little bit far out? Like some kind of science fiction, Soylent Green type thing, you know? You, know, you remember that 
60s movie, you know, Soylent Green, where the people found out they were grinding up humans and making crackers out of them, and the people were eating them, and they didn't know. It's pretty gross, right? Well, guess what? It's it's. I don't know what they're grinding up anymore, because after you see what they're grinding right now, you might have a question in your mind, what else is being ground up? You just really don't know. So rendering, we're going to talk about what is rendering. Okay, let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and watch this video, the first video. We're going to get a rendering 101. You're going to have to just listen to this, and I'll go over it a little bit later. Let's go ahead and watch the first video. Now, that looks, you know, rather um, friendly, right? You know, we're we're taking um, rendering. Let, let's go back to slide four, because I want to show. I'm going to read some of the things that the listeners over the uh, radio or in other uh, venues, didn't get to, to actually read. But it tells you that rendering is a sustainable way to recycle material that would otherwise be wasted. Remember, they don't want to waste anything, okay? And they show that rendering is the process of breaking down, down animal byproducts into fats and proteins, okay? Now, it, you look at that picture. It looks so clean, right? It looks clean and, like, real environmental friendly and, you know, it looks... Looks harmless. You know, hey, we're just taking some uh, animal byproducts and we're turning them into fats and proteins. No big deal, right? Let's go to the next slide. And then it shows that their rendering product ingredients are in, uh, let's see, it shows you that they're in ingredients for pet food, ingredients for livestock, ingredients in biofuel, ingredients to feed poultry, like chickens. It's in ingredients in fertilizer and its ingredients to feed fish. And then in small print at the bottom, as you notice, in small print it says, plus other products like soap, lubricants, detergents, and more. <laughs> well, what does that more include? Well, you're going to have to figure this out, you know. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, you know, they say up to 50% of a cow is not uh, edible or usable, so they're taking those parts... They're taking 100% of the cow, and they're rendering it. They're melting it down into a usable protein or substance, right? Go to the next slide. It, re it reduces greenhouse gases, see? So it's going gonna, it's gonna to help with global warming. It's going to stop global warming if we do this. This is, this is what they're saying. But as we found out, in this process of learning in our in our journey here in the peaceful solution this is not causing you know it says that a, a decomposing dairy cow it says one decomposing dairy cow emits greenhouse gas equal to 1.2 carbon dioxide or 1.2 metric tons of carbon dioxide so if we go ahead and just render the cow melt it down we can avoid this you know, uh, decomposing dairy cow gas, right? You know, they also have also uh, suggested that, you know, cow flatulence, flatulence, everybody knows what, you watch Dr. Oz, you know what flatulence is. He talks about it. Um, it stinks. Um, cow flatulence they say we can stop that too and cow belching you know when a cow belches it emo it emits carbon dioxide so we can stop that too we can genetically modify the cow to keep it from belching and from making flatulence we can change the cow right does that sound wise to change the cow you're gonna change the cow what are you gonna do to change the cow huh sounds pretty scary now, in the next slide, it shows the finished products of rendering. You know, it shows cat pet food, shows lotion, shows a grocery bag full of something. Who knows what's in that bag, right? These animal ingredients that they're melting down. And by the way, they're trying to make you think, psst, I got a secret. They're trying to make you think it's only the cow they're grinding up. <laughs> uh, I got news for you. Okay, first of all, let's show the next slide, or I'm sorry, the next video on feedlot. Uh, this is going to show an actual cow that they're going to pick up for rendering. 
They have trucks that go around and pick up dead animals. In this case, you're going to see a dead cow. Okay, and it's going to be going to the rendering plant. So let's go ahead and play the video. Got him. There's the, there's the truck. Picks up the uh, cows, $11 a piece, and hauls them off to rendering plant. You can see it. You can see a hoof sticking out of the top there. Apparently, this thing's already full of, pretty full of cows. How many, how many you will pick up in one day on average? How many pickups on one day? Yeah. Probably 10 to 12. 10 to 12. They cost, what, $11 they charge to pick them up? Ever had one explode on you? cycle for unfortunate cows. The question is, is it better to die of load or have a pneumatic hamburger through your brain? I imagine the hammer through the brain would be a lot, a lot nicer. I warned you not to eat, right? Now that cow, for viewers that didn't get to see that video, I'd suggest you go and watch it, um, you know, when you can. There's a dead, bloated cow laying at a feedlot. Probably, I don't know how long it's been dead, but it's bloated. Extremely, uh, probably might have been days it's been dead. There's flies all over it. And the rendering truck came to pick up the dead cow. You know, they have a truck that goes around. I know I remember watching Mike Rowe one time, Dirty Jobs. It was a series on A&E, I think. And he showed, he went on a rendering truck once, and they're, a lot of times they're red trucks, you know, they're so they can warn people to stay back from them because they stink pretty bad. But the truck was full of dead cows, other dead cows. The guy said he picks up at least 11, you know, 10 to 12 a day, I think he said, at $11 each. They charge $11 to come and pick them up. Now, this video has been around a little while, so it might be a little more now, you know, cost of inflation. But uh, these dead animals are being picked up and they're being taken to rendering plants. Okay, now in this case, in this video, you saw a cow being picked up. Okay, a dead, bloated cow. Now, is that something that you would consider even wanting in your lotion? 
or your um let's see what did they say they were putting it in <laughs> detergent <laughs> do you think that's healthy for another cow to eat when they melt it down and they take the protein you know because when they render it let me explain what they do they they grind up the animal in a grinder the entire animal i know that seems like really that's a little far out they can take that whole animal and they can grind it up all that whole rotten bloated cow that you saw well a lot of times let me tell you what they do because i watched it on dirty jobs on the cows what they do is they don't waste anything remember they're not going to put a lot of times if they can save the hide of the cow they'll take a bloated dead cow and they'll very carefully they put inside the cow's uh, hide they inject a needle into it it's like a needle looking thing and they blow air into it and it makes the cow this the the hide of the cow blow out and then they cut it so they can take the hide off and save the hide okay and a lot of times those cows are so bloated they blow up and all the innards of the cow blow up and all the guts and everything come they explode because they're full of gases okay it can occur it's a very that's why it was on that show dirty jobs because it is a dirty job doing something like that a cow should have been buried in the ground okay you should never take a dead animal that died of itself like that and and feed it or put it into any kind of you know feed or render it melt it down and put the proteins from it into uh, animal feed or anything any products i don't care what they are but this is what they're doing Okay, so let me uh, let me see what's next on the agenda. I told you it's it's a pretty packed, and, and it's not nice. Okay, this next video, um, this this next video is from the uh, entity that acts. I'm not going to name the name of the company. Okay, I'm not going to out them, but they're the ones that showed you the rendering process that you just watched in the video before this one. And they made it look super clean. They make it look super, you know, like like nothing to see here. You know, we're just taking some animal products and we're melting them down. We're taking animals, we're you know, cows. We're melting down the uh, part of the cow that's, you know, uh, remember 50% of the cow is not usable. We're just taking the parts that aren't usable and we're making them into parts we can use, right? Or we're making them into something we can use because we don't want to waste the cow and we don't want to cause global warming by a decomposing cow right this is what they're saying this next video i gotta warn you if if you love animals if you're an animal lover you probably probably want to be use caution um but remember the animals don't feel this because they're dead okay so but you really need to see this because you really need to see what's taking place and you need to see it's not just cows and i'll be as this is not narrated so i'm going to have to narrate it as we go along i'll have to tell you what they're putting in as they put it in so let's go ahead and play the next video of a rendering plan. this is called a harslev uh, animal grinder it's a renderer is that a rendering plant Here you see a forklift driver coming along with the first animal that they're going to put in. And uh, it doesn't look like a cow to me. What it looks like is a sheep or uh, some kind of goat or sheep. Looks like a goat or a lamb. It looks like a lamb. Notice they put the whole animal in the grinder. Fur and everything. Nothing left within just a couple seconds, right? Now here comes the forklift driver again with another animal in the loaded in the loader. This time it looks like he's got a pig.
Remember, this is all going into the same vat. All this animal meat is going into the same vat. There's a vat down below the grinder that the meat falls into that they're gonna take later and they're gonna take it into a, a cooker and they're gonna melt it. Here comes the next animal in the loader. Now this time we have a cow, a whole cow. The entire cow. Head, everything. So it's been about 45 seconds or so and that entire cow has been ground to nothing and it's down in the vat. <clears throat> now if you're a, uh, uh, <laughs> this next one, it's not gonna be easy to take, but you gotta know what they're doing. This is a rendering plant and you don't even know the rest of the story as I'm going to show you after you see this next animal that's loaded in. So here comes the forklift driver with the next load. This time he's got a horse. The entire horse. The entire horse is in this grinder and it's grinding up that animal to nothing. The hide, and who knows how long it's been dead. We don't know how long these animals have been dead and it really doesn't matter, but this is what they're doing in a rendering plant. That horse is almost, uh, it's been in there about, what, 40 seconds, 45 seconds, and it's uh, pretty close to being totally disintegrated already. I know it's hard to look at. It's, uh, it's, it's very... Uh, it's very heartbreaking to know that human beings could do this to uh, other human beings or even the cows because the cows are going to get the byproducts from what they're doing right here. They're going to feed it to the animals. Not just the cows, but the, but the dogs, the cats. Remember, they're putting it in the animal feed, including dog food, cat food, whatever else. Okay, you can cut it. That horse is gone. Now let's go back to the book on page 209 because I got I got some really uh really uh horrible. I could have showed you pictures of it. I didn't want to cuz that was bad enough. But if you're a dog and cat lover, you're not going to want to hear this. So in the middle of page 209 in the book it says rendering is a process of turning one substance into another by melting it down. In this case, dead, diseased cows were boiled down, then ground up and added to cattle feed. Are you feeling a little queasy? Well, hold on, it gets worse. Not only are cows rendered, but also roadkill, dead cats and dogs from the pound, and any other dead carcass just lying around. You ever wonder what they do with all those dogs and cats they euthanize at the pound? You think they just throw them in the trash can? Nope. I told you, they're recycling everything now. They found a way to make money. And I know this sounds gross, but you know, we've, we've really got to, we've really got to tell people what's really going on or they're, they're going to be, we don't want people to be looking at the world with rose colored glasses. Okay. You really need to know what's going into your food supply so you can make inform choices about what you're ingesting or what kind of soap you're using 
you know, what kind of laundry detergent you're using. You know, they're not marking it with what they're doing here. They're not telling you, hey, this is, there's a rendered animal in this, uh, in this detergent you're buying. You know, they're not telling you this stuff. You have to research it on your own, and you better be researching because it's going to do damage if you're not. Okay, so when they, when, you know, they grind the animals down, then they take it to a, a, a cooker and they cook the, the meat and they boil it down. And the, I guess the, uh, the foamy stuff that comes to the top is the protein. They scoop that off the top and that's what they add to the animal feed and they put into these products that we saw. It looks quite different than it did in that first video, doesn't it? Didn't that first video look real environmentally friendly and all that? It looked real clean and didn't look anything like it now, does it? So, the process of feeding rendered animals to cows has resulted in a disease called bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or simply mad cow disease. But you know what, though, folks? It's not mad cow disease. It's mad man disease. <laughs> the cow didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't the cow's choice to eat this stuff. The cows are being tricked into eating it. And even the people that are feeding it to the cows, they really don't even really know. A lot of these uh, farmers, these ranchers, they, they, you know, they go and they buy certain feed and they don't even know what we're talking about right here. They haven't even considered that they're doing this. That they're feeding animals to an herbivore. It's not a carnivore. It doesn't eat meat. So it's going to damage the body of the cow. Remember, you cannot mix or mess with the way things are made. <laughs> you know, a human being isn't made to eat waste. Okay? So if you feed a human being waste, there's going to be damage. There's going to be consequences to the human being's body and mind if you do so. You know, it's just like a car. If you put the wrong kind of fuel in the car, or you put water in the tank instead of gasoline, it's not going to run. All right? going to be a consequence you can't do these things without suffering some kind of consequence so a mutated protein called a pre now some people pronounce it prion i've heard other scientists say prion but it's actually prion a mutated protein called a prion is thought to be the cause of this disease no the cause of this disease is feeding animals dead animals or any animals to an herbivore that's the cause. Now, because we're doing that, yes, it's created, you know, a, a prion is really a false protein, you know, and it, it actually, as the author of the Peaceful Solution once described, your brain needs protein, okay? And it's one thing that can get through the blood-brain barrier of an animal is protein because the brain needs protein to function. Well, that prion is a false protein. It, it tricks the cow's brain into thinking it's a protein. It gets in there, and it makes what's called a fold, okay? And that's what creates the little spongy little holes, little holes in the animal's brain. That's why it's called spongiform, because it looks like a sponge, the little holes in the cow's brain. And the cow, you know, after a while, it starts to not be able to walk. In fact, let's look at the next slide to some of the symptoms of mad cow disease. Disease. It says, uh, you know, you see uh, 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 loss of uh, balance, staggering, loss of appetite. Uh, the animals be tend to become aggressive, foaming at the mouth. They can't walk. Okay, they can't walk. Um, I don't have the video tonight. I, I'm going to try to. I, I'm sure that uh, Katan, the next teacher, he'll probably show you uh, that even these animals that are sick, that are that are, that develop these diseases, are sometimes still put into the food supply purposely by the people that run these food lots. You know, I've seen videos of forklifts taking an animal with mad cow disease, a cow, a downer cow, as they call it. It's downer cow because it can't walk. It staggers. It can't walk. 
and it can't, you know, and the rule is, uh, the rule is for slaughterhouses, if that cow does not walk into the slaughterhouse on its own, you can't, you can't slaughter it and put it in the food supply because it's, it's, the cow's got disease. You cannot take a diseased cow and put it into the food supply. But who's really watching this stuff? The one I saw was on hidden cameras. Somebody went into a feedlot and showed what they were doing at this particular feedlot, that they were actually taking a forklift and helping the cow into the slaughterhouse with a forklift so they could slaughter it for profit and put it in your and put it on your table. Now, does that sound like somebody that has consideration for their fellow man? You know, like, you know, you know, it's really what's really odd about that. That person that did that could actually end up eating that particular hamburger. <laughs> now, how do you know he's not going to get that or one of his loved ones or somebody he knows not going to eat that hamburger from that particular mad cow infected animal? Right. Never know. OK, so it says the process of feeding rendered animals to cows has resulted in a disease called uh, BSE or bungee or uh, uh, bovine spongiform encephalopathy or mad cow disease, a mu mutated protein called a prion is thought to be the cause of the disease. Mad cow disease leaves spongy holes in the animal's brain, and that's where the name spongiform comes from. This disease of the brain affects the cow's ability to do simple tasks like standing and walking. The animals also lose interest in food and water, and eventually they die. It has been reported that mad cow disease first appeared in a British dairy in 1985. Get this, and it's underlined. Within 10 years, 175,000 cow cows died from the disease. And it was around 1995, in fact, you know, when the, the first case of the mad cow disease uh, actually was uh, documented in, uh, in uh, the UK and Britain. Um, which we'll get to in a minute, but well, let me continue to read. It says, for at least a decade, scientists in Britain thought mad cow disease only affected cows. They explained to the British citizens that eating the meat and dairy products of infected cows would not hurt them because normally diseases don't cross species. In this case, they were wrong. And I don't know where they thought that. <laughs> they do. <laughs> And I can't talk about it right now. I'm in a family-friendly environment, and, you know, I got I to gotta really think before I say things. I can't just, but they do get into human beings, but it's not the animal doing it. It's not the animal putting it into the human being. It's things that humans do to get these diseases from these animals or these uh, bacteria or viruses from these animals into their body, okay? And it's not things they should be doing. It says... Uh, the meat or dairy products of a cow that has mad cow disease can infect humans, too. So think of all the products that come from cows. Is it just the meat? No, you get the butter, you get the milk. You know, how many things are made from milk? How many things in the store have ingredients that contain milk? Many, many things, even dry stuff, you know, that you buy off the shelf has the ingredient of milk inside of it. If that milk is infected by an animal that has mad cow disease, guess what? And you ingest it? They've already shown that it can cross the species barrier and it gets into you. And it causes something called, as we're going to see here, Crutchfeld-Jacob disease. It says the first documented case of a human developing mad cow disease, or in the human medical terms, Crutchfeld-Jacob disease, occurred in England. Peter Hall died in 1995 at the age of 20 from the human form of mad cow disease. Can, can you put up the next slide? Because I want people to visually see this. Peter Hall died in 1995 at the age of 20. Okay, 1995. Now, go to the next slide because I want you to see an interesting fact about human brain, the human, uh, what's called... Uh, uh, dementia dementia I don't know if you ever heard of dementia but dementia is where uh, it's not a disease it's just a general term for impaired ability to remember think or make decisions that interfere with doing everyday activities 
and a particular disease called Alzheimer's disease is a dementia is is a uh, is a form of dementia. Okay, and I want you to notice the headline here: Rates of dementia in the U.S. have surged since the mid 1990s. Hey, that's when Peter Hall died, 1995, right? From mad cow disease, which is a dementia. It's a it affects the brain. It affects the person's ability to function. It impairs their brain function where they can't function. Is that a coincidence? That Alzheimer's, which Alzheimer's disease was was found in 1906. But notice, it surged in the mid 1990s. Why? And why did it occur around the time they had to slaughter or they had to put to, put to death 175,000 cows in Britain? And you know something else? You know what they did with those cows? They burned them. And the ashes from the cows, remember I told you the other day that, uh, you know, remember those vats they said they had the human waste in? They said they had them at 128 degrees and it was taking care of everything, you know, all those bad diseases, it was killing it. I uh, hate to tell you, but this prion inside the mad cow disease, it takes temperatures of 850 degrees plus to kill that prion. Okay, and those fires they were burning in England, they didn't kill the prions. The prions went everywhere in the ashes and spread all over the land, okay, and got into the who knows where else, the water that circulates all over the earth. And all of a sudden, people, the dementia started exploding. I got one more video to show. This is uh, quite, quite uh, telling. This is from China, actually. Anybody here like uh, flavored, uh, flavored, uh, uh, apple flavored uh, crisps? <laughs> Go ahead and play the video. I want to show you how they make them. This is in China. This is a truck backing up, and uh, inside the truck, there's just a bunch of dead pigs. Man's picking them up with his bare hands putting them inside a, on a conveyor belt. Now I want you to see where they go on this conveyor belt, each dead pig. He's put two on there already. Now here's the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt's going it's right, right into a grinder. The whole pig, right into a grinder. Now you're going to see here in a moment there's another man that's at a machine that's con that controls this process of grinding this pig down and then heating it heating the meat till it c and it comes out like a like a, a a grainy floury substance you know like sand almost and this process just takes a few minutes. You'll see the end product here in just a second. These are dead pigs going into a machine. This is real. This is not fake. Okay. Now notice, what do you see there? You see the meat? See it being ground up? It's going into that vat. It's going into the vat. And that vat is taking it to some steamers where it's going to go through a very, very high temperature process. To, now, you see what's coming out? See that sandy-looking stuff? Remember, this just takes a very few minutes with that machine they got right there. I don't know what it's called. I don't want to know. I wouldn't be interested in buying one. Now, notice, you see what's coming out? Those are chips chips from the pig that just went in the vat a few minutes ago and see what they flavor it with the apple flavor or orange flavor whichever you like folks you got a serious problem here in the world people really need to be educated about what this is causing and I think in some cases they do know what it's causing but 
the love of money, the thirst for profits, it 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 blinds them to anything. It it there's no consideration as long as I'm making money, I don't care who I hurt. Okay? But that cannot be healthy for anybody to eat anything like that. Okay? That's 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 really like the Soylent Green movie I was talking to you about. That's Soylent Green type stuff. And people, I think if people actually knew, and I read the comments below that video, and some people were saying, so that's how they make pork rinds? <laughs> you know, or, you know, but they weren't really grossed out about it. They were just kind of like, you know, uh, well, I guess that's how they make animal or banana flavored chips or, you know, whatever came out of that. Those hard, shelly looking things that they flavor and people eat them out of bags. Oh, it's horrible. That's all the time I got for tonight, and I'm thankful, man, because I probably got to go find a... <laughs> got to breed somewhere a little bit after seeing all that um now i'm going to leave off for the next uh, teacher katan should be the next teacher i'll be i'm on page 209 i think it was 210 right 210 we're going to leave off on page 210 i'll let katan pick up wherever he'd like there because i'm sure he has a lot to add to this please please do your best to inform people you know tell them about these videos share these videos you know on facebook share them with your friends let people know what's taking place with the food supply. Be a real friend and, and be a, a, a spreader of the peaceful solution. And the next class will be on 11-13-2022 at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. We hope to see you then. Have a great evening.